10 of 10. I don't think people should be able to just walk across the street and thumb their nose at law enforcement. North Dakota Senator Tim Flackle and other state lawmakers want city cops and campus cops to be able to work together again. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. This comes after a July 2015 North Dakota Supreme Court decision ruling that campus police only have jurisdiction on campus grounds. With police departments across the valley saying they need more officers, lawmakers are hoping to help. They want legislation passed that provides additional police help and also makes sure communities close to the campuses are safe. Valley News Team's Cornelius Hawker has more. If they see a major law broke, as they're going from the traditional campus to those facilities downtown, it seems that they should be there to help protect the public. North Dakota Senator Tim Flackle is one of many people calling into question the North Dakota Supreme Court July 2015 decision which stopped university police from making arrests and patrolling off campus. I think it's not so much that we're trying to reverse the Supreme Court decision, it's about really trying to clarify what we think is the right thing to do. College students have taken note of this decision, especially those who live close to campus, but depend on Fargo police to handle emergency situations. With the way it is now, it probably freed up a lot of time for officers to be, you know, making sure that events on campus were more safe or making sure people walking across campus at night were safe. But Alex Nielsen knows there could be a time when relying on a police force based more than a mile away wouldn't be effective as relying on the police force right down the street. It would be, I mean, in, in some instances it would definitely be nice for them to be able to, to respond and come and help out. Time is very important in some of these cases and we don't have time necessarily to contact law enforcement, get to the right person, get approvals, because sometimes these things happen in the middle of the night. Cornelius Hawker, Valley News Live. The Board of Higher Education will now look over the proposal with plans to submit it to the 2017 legislative session. Seconds can mean the difference between life and death in an emergency situation. Could medical information stored on your cell phone help paramedics save you? FM Ambulance says it's not going to take the time to swipe through your device to find the information. Hospitals actually have more use for the medical information stored on devices, but Sanford Health says be careful with having that info ready to go. So if you have this that's very convenient to get on your phone, remember that your coworkers, friends, family, anybody that can take your phone for 15 minutes is going to have access to your medical information. Another area where the info stored on your device can be helpful is identifying you and contacting your next of kin. Some Minnesota lawmakers will try again to pass a pre-kindergarten bill. It was a major priority for Governor Dayton and state Democrats last session but didn't get enough support to pass. And today, one of the state's top DFLers was in Moorhead trying to drum up support for pre-K. Representative Aaron Murphy joined local legislators and school officials, getting a first-hand look at the facilities and the programs offered for the school district's youngest learners. And despite the bill's defeat last session, Murphy's pressing forward. She says pre-K is one of her top priorities. I think the hard sell is the political sell, and I think the hard sell is with some of my Republican colleagues, but we will continue to work with Minnesotans because if they're supporting this, then I think we can finally get it done. Moorhead Schools Superintendent Lynn Kovash says the district is ready to take on pre-K if it gets through the legislature. She says, though, some additional space may be necessary to make it work. The search continues tonight for a shoplifter who threatened an employee at a Grand Forks Walmart. He's described as being about 5 feet 5 inches tall, wearing a dark hooded jacket with the hood up. Now, authorities say the man was caught shoplifting and then showed a knife and threatened the employee. His face was partially covered by what appeared to be a white scarf or a bomber-style hat. Anyone with information should contact the, contact, rather, the Grand Forks Police Department. It's Friday, so it's time to take a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say Dylan Breen is wanted for possession of a controlled substance and failure to appear in charges, as well as a probation violation. Call your local law enforcement if you have any information on Breen's whereabouts. Crime, it's what makes a person feel safe or scared in their community. Downtown Fargo is a hot spot, not just for going out, but for crime as well. Fargo police note that the use of alcohol is the root of many of the problems downtown. They say they most often get calls for people being overly intoxicated to property being broken into. 
Property crimes are on the rise and will continue to grow as the city grows. The shortage of police officers does affect their work. However, police say they'll do everything they can do to see those numbers go down. There's a lot of push for, you know, controlling alcohol consumption, just kind of making sure that people aren't over consuming. And um, that seems to be the hot button topic when it comes to the downtown area. The calls that we get um, when they come in from from somebody who's just seen it, you know, it really helps us out because we can't be everywhere at once. Downtown business owners as well as community members have seen the increase of crime downtown. Fargo police say they have been very cooperative in helping report crimes they see. Thirteen contestants are competing tonight to become the 2016 North Dakota Auctioneer Champion. Valley News Team's Krista Baim was there tonight and shows us what it takes to be part of a family tradition. You guys are ready. Let's have some fun on the fundraiser deal. Give them five, ten, 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 ten. I have been doing it for about three and a half years. Thirty years. And this is just my second year. First thing they usually say is they want to hear your chant. They want to hear you selling. Really? You can talk like that? <laughs> Oh, I didn't think of that. Maybe, um, maybe, maybe. There's a lot more to it than just bid calling. You have to be clear and concise and um, really present yourself well. There's filler words, or we like to call them phrases. It's just tying the numbers together, asking questions. Now, here, what do you say? Give me 20 and go. 20, better now, 20. How about that? You get to sell all sorts of things. Handy, handy for any deck party. Put it in your living room. It don't matter where you're at. Here we go. 50. Now. I'll do real estate to farm sales, uh, to forage sales. <laughs> It gives you just a certain type of adrenaline and kind of that rush. It's also fun to just uh, have that challenge, too, to try to make people bid more and get the most money that you can. And both to go, sir. I'll tell you when it's too high, I promise. Get $50. Thank you. Now five. And I'll bid another five. I'm going to bid the 55. Now 60. Sold $55 This is the 64th annual North Dakota Auctioneers Association Convention. The winner holds the title for a year and can never compete in the same competition again.